Today, it's my pleasure to introduce a new regular here on Eyewitness News, Dr. Lillian Glass, a Beverly Hills speech pathologist. She's here each week to talk about the importance of speech and speaking well in your life. Today, she's going to focus on improving your total image by improving your speech. And to begin with, I'm certainly glad you're here, and you can go right to work on me. Okay? I've been waiting for someone like you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, some people probably do, because speech, I suppose, unless it's really very impaired, is something that we would probably take for granted and consider ourselves to be stuck with. Absolutely. Uh -huh. In fact, the American Speech and Hearing Association has stated that there are about 22 million people with communication difficulties. But we know that there are a great many more than that that do exist. Studies have shown that the way you speak may be even more important than the way you look. It, it, it would probably affect your life sometimes, and you wouldn't even know it. Absolutely. How you present yourself, really. Absolutely, in a very mm -hmm. subtle way, because the way you speak certainly can influence subtle things about you. Um, many people have mentioned this before, and in fact, historically, uh, the Greeks have mentioned this. Galen once said that it's not the eyes that are the windows of our soul, it's the voice, it's the communication mechanism, it's the speech mechanism. In other words, it's very take the important. rocks out of your mouth, right? <laughs> as Absolutely. the Greeks used to say, huh? or practice with them in, yes. as they used to do. But there are a lot of things that people <laughs> do with their communication that they really may not think uh, may interfere with their speech. For example, people may speak in a monotone, or they may speak quite rapidly, or they may stutter, or they may mispronounce words. And a person can detect their problems by listening to themselves on a tape recorder, in the home environment, for example. They can listen to themselves. Uh, they can also be more critical about what other people say about them. What are some of the most common problems you find uh, from uh, people with uh, speaking uh, uh, problems, really? Now, I, I don't want to say disabilities. I'm just talking about everyday run-of-the-mill problems, not, uh, for instance, uh, uh, someone who would uh, try to correct a, a, a lisp or stuttering or stammering. Those are very apparent. What about the others, though? Less Nasality. So. That's one of the How most do you common fix problems. That? A lot of times, this can be fixed by just opening your mouth. Mm -hmm. That can mm -hmm. reduce it. I know some uh, people on radio that uh, have <laughs> there may also terrible be a, problems like that. There may also be a functional problem. There may be an organic problem. There may also be problems with the vocal cords. A person may be sounding too hoarse or too harsh because of vocal pathology, and this needs to be examined by There's the physician. There's just really a lot more to this, uh, Lillian, isn't there, than uh, we have time for right now, but a, really uh, there's a lot of areas that we can cover. And in the uh, next weeks that you're going to be here with us, uh, every Monday uh, yes. at this time, uh, what are some of the areas that you're going to hit on? We're going to talk about stuttering. How are you going to make me better? <laughs> huh? You're the best. Oh, no. <laughs> we can't do that. Oh, no. We're going to talk about sex differences in communication. In fact, we know that men and women speak a different language, mm -hmm. and that's some of the things we'll be discussing. Isn't that the truth? Okay, and now back to uh, Tony for a bit of feedback. Tony. 